Dead cap. Oh, whoa, whoa. He, get, get, get. he was really jumping here. You grab it. Three months ago, you saw me ask how my tropical fish to my backyard pond is my way of giving them a little vacation. But now their vacation is over, it's time to catch them. So if you're new here, welcome to the backyard pond. Since my last video, this pond looks a little bit different. And that's because a couple of weeks ago, we had Hurricane Isaia, which literally came through like a hurricane. This thing came through and it tore up a lot of my plants. And since then, I really wasn't motivated to do any maintenance on a pond. And here we are today. So there's a dramatic vine on a pond and it's giving a pond an entire like forest type of setting. Um, and the crazy thing is that this vine is not mine, it's the neighbors. They climbed over the fence, they took over the lattice, which is over my pond, and this thing is growing like crazy. Now, at first I wasn't really liking it because I have a lot of plants that require full sun and they're getting drowned out by this vine on top. However, the neighbor said that any fruits produced by this vine, we get to have it, or any vegetables, I don't know what it is, but they said whatever comes from it, we get to have what comes on our side. And it looks like most of it is growing on our side. And besides that, um, I kind of like the tropical forest type of feel for now. I might not want it next year, but for now, it's not bad. So I decided to leave it. Okay, so we're gonna try to get these fish. It is a little bit darker in here with this all covering so um, it will be a little bit more challenging but you can see the 10 for your barbs right there in the center these guys are gonna be my biggest look at them he looks even like fat and bigger compared to the last time i put them in here but they're in there gonna have to catch those and then i have the red devil who stays in this cave he should be the easiest and yeah we're gonna catch these guys and bring them in the basement first thing we have to do is get water out of that pond and i have right here my little giant pump and we have some nice flexible holes right here. I'm just gonna go ahead and pop that on there. Chop that down in there. Now the water coming from the pond is super nutritious. So we just use it to water some of the plants around the house while we're doing this water change. This guy is just so perplexed. Juno. <laughs> right, so when it comes to catching a fish out the pond, I was gonna use a five gallon bucket. However, um, these guys look pretty big and I don't want them jumping out the bucket. So I'm gonna put them in a pool so that I could get a good look at them and then figure out the next step from there. And now my weapon of choice. Oh, look at that, it's tough. Come on. These things better be worth it. We're gonna fill this up with the pond water. Of course, we gotta do it in the shade because we don't wanna to get too hot. Don't know how long it's gonna take me to catch all these fish. And um, yeah, we're gonna fill that with pond water. Look at, I don't know why it's going like that. But yeah, we're gonna fill it with pond water and go from there. I feel like I'm going into a jungle zone. So we have the power cut and now we have a better view. It still is pretty dark in here so I can't really see too well. Um, really quickly, the, the mosquito fish population has increased dramatically. I mean, all these roots in here has allowed them to multiply and multiply and multiply. Started with just two and now I have, I think about 30 of them. Let's see if I could catch one for you guys. So they like to stay all up in this creeping Jenny. Fast. 
see what I'm doing? Mm -hmm. You can see the net in the water? Yeah. All right, I'm gonna try to get some of these temple barbs out of here. And these guys are extremely fast. Wait, come closer, you can get the net. Beautiful. Where? Where? Get ready. Put it in the pond. Like I'm getting space. Here, I can pull. Go, take it over your hand. Here, keep an eye on it. I'll call you when I need it again. Just make sure you don't jump. Seven of them all together. And one giant red devil. We're big. We got a big one. What fish at? He's still in there. Oh, oh, oh. Get him, get him, get him, get him, get him. He's trying to get the fish. Where is out? Where? Where? Watch out. He's stepping. He's going out. Where can you go to? I'm, I'm, I'm All right, so we had a few complications. We had um the dogs. I told you guys if you follow me on Instagram, Juno likes to fish. And we There's one right here in front of us. Mm. Hey guy, once it moves, you don't be excited as ever. Yeah, get it to move a little bit. That's two of them. Look at the big one still right there. Oh, you move. Oh! That is that way. You try to break your arm in. Yeah, he broke my arm in. And we put the fish in there and he went for the fish and he made a jump. So um, that was kind of crazy. We got the dogs in the house now. And so now we got the big red devil. And just gonna go ahead and put him in there gently. Push him in front. You don't bite right? No. Go get out. Thank you if he's not get out. Guys out loud. Alright, that's two. We just have six more ten bars. Of course, it's taking a lot longer than I anticipated. So I'm gonna go ahead and take these two downstairs and start getting them acclimated. So this guy, along with the other ones, are gonna go into 350. The tank is already overstocked. They're just gonna overstock it even more. But for the time being, um, that's my only option. And this guy, I'm gonna to try to put him in the 880. Now, I already tried this when I first built the tank and he almost killed the Oscar in like two hours. So it's been a month. I'm hoping that the Oscar remembers what happened previously and stays away from him, allows him to um, become tank boss and hopefully that goes well. So yeah, I'm gonna get these guys down here and then we're gonna resume And he was like come on, come on. We're using that Look you ready Wait, Don't get on too much and that guy was super hard to catch and we're just gonna have to um, probably take out some more water but they look how thick they are that's the crazy thing they're just so thick and look at Juno Juno no no Juno um, normally in the lake, he likes to go and dive. He dives in after um, the sunfish that we see locally. And right now, this guy is wanting this fish. Okay, we got problems. Hold this. Rocky, give it up. Hey, Rocky, yeah. Hold this. He's like a bear wanting the fish, but we're not going to let him have it. 
He will really jump in there and grab it. No, um, okay, we gotta take these dogs out of here. Come on. The thing, um, the second's going up, so. Two. Come on, take over. That, oh, he got down. Do not down here. How you get down here? He squeezed through, boy. Wait, wait, don't, don't release him. I know, they in the net still. Juno, Juno, move. Oh, now he's playing. He was doing this too. Don't, don't get bit. You gotta get a leash. I saw him looking through, but I didn't think he managed to squeeze through. We're going to that. Hold up. Mm -hmm. Now the reason why I got the pool was because I thought it was a good idea because I'm gonna be able to put all of them in at the same time. But they keep jumping out, so I got these two. And this smaller one just jumped out. So I'm gonna go ahead and put them both back in the basement. And um, hopefully, it runs nice and smooth. Stop it. Okay, everyone, so now we are down here in the fish room. I don't know why, I always expect these wolves to be easy and they always turn out super complicated. But we finished the job. We have the seven tin for you barbs in this tank. The water is dirty in both of these aquariums because today I went and I cleaned out my filters. So we still have dirty water from that. But you can see these guys in here. Some of them are beat up because they did jump out, but look at this guy. Look how fat he is, look how tall he is. It didn't really get much longer, but it definitely got a lot fatter and a lot taller. And that's because they were eating algae all day and I fed them the koi food twice a day. And they definitely um, benefited from that. But the bad thing is that this tank is definitely overstocked. It's not as bad as I expected. I thought that I was gonna put these fish in this tank and immediately it would need to take them back out. Um, I think I could go a few months, but eventually I will have to break down this tank as far as the population. Um, but for now, they'll do. And then we have the red devil in this tank. Last time he was in this tank, he caused a lot of problems. I'm hoping that, oh, look at this. That's the problem. The Oscar never learns. He goes and he challenges the red devil only for the red devil to put him in his place, almost killing him. So, um, I'm afraid history is going to repeat itself. The Oscar is non-stop charging the Red Devil. Eventually the Red Devil is going to say enough is enough. He's going to turn around and he's going to nearly kill the Oscar. And I'm probably going to end up taking the Red Devil out and putting the Red Devil in that aquarium. If I put the Red Devil in this tank, I'm definitely going to have to take some fish out. And I may put the um, tin for you barbs down there with this guy. This guy is kind of aggressive, but I think with seven of the tin for you barbs, he won't kill him. Oh yeah, that's um, the case, this Red Devil. He's a fighter, the Oscar is not a fighter. However, the Oscar is the tank boss. The Oscar feels the need to challenge him. Look at him. This water, like I said, is dirty because I cleaned the filters. But the Oscar, look at him. He's pretty much yelling. He's yelling at him. And once the Red Devil is adjusted into, into the aquarium, he's gonna fight him. I guess I'll come back a little bit later to show you the results. Look at that. A punch from the Oscar. Okay, we are about 25 minutes later from that first clip. And as you just saw, the Oscar is running from the Red Devil because the Red Devil is now comfortable. Now, because the Oscar treated the Red Devil the way he treated them, the way he welcomed them into the Sephorium with aggression, now, out of all these fish, the Oscar is going to be the main fish that the Red Devil targets, as you see right now. Now, it's not too much because Red Devil is still trying to get used to everything, but the Oscar is going to be his opponent from now on, and that means we have big problems. So, I'll come back a little bit later and give you guys another update. Just look at the stomachs on these fish. They really were eating outside a lot. Look how fat they are. Meanwhile, in this aquarium, the Oscar is being stalked by the Red Devil. I love how he contrasts in this aquarium. The orange really looks nice, 
but I need him to be at peace with these guys and not to kill them. So we're still watching, we're still um, observing. Right now he's slowly following the Oscar. The Oscar doesn't really have too much damage, but if the Red Devil keeps this up, the Oscar is going to be worn out. He's not going to run, and the Red Devil is just going to attack. Okay, everyone, so it's been one day with the Red Devil inside the aquarium. For the most part, everybody is okay, except the Oscar. The Oscar, you see, he's not in plain sight, and it's because he's forced to hide. Um, he's in one of these corners, but he has to hide because he's right here. He has to hide, and look at his body. Scratched up, and that's most likely from all the um, branches. But he has to run from the Red Devil, and he runs and crashes into everything. And then the Red Devil's being especially hard towards the Oscar. Now it is the Oscar's fault, because the Oscar did approach him and start the fight. But now the Red Devil is going way too far. So I'm going to have to figure out what to do with him. Because right now, if I leave him in here, he may very well kill the Oscar. And he's only been in the tank for about 24 hours.